Hey guys, this is Christine Vallis, and I hope you are all doing well out there. I wanted to jump on and share some insights about the time period that we are in right now and that we are entering into. And for those of you who caught the chalkboard teaching for the month, um, you remember that this month of Tammuz is connected with our vision and how the Lord is encouraging us to guard our eyes, and as we do, we will guard our heart. So if you miss that teaching, you can scroll down on Facebook or check it out on my website or even on YouTube. And um, I pray you enjoy that teaching. Um, but you know, starting this week, we'll begin uh, a three week period known as Between the Straits. The beginning and ending dates, these bookend dates, actually mark two events in Israel's history that were always meant to be a blessing. Um, the 18th day of Tammuz was the day when Moses descended Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments and the plans for the tabernacle. And then on the 9th of Av, that was the day when the spies returned from surveying the promised land. And so guys, both of these days were meant to be just a glorious, great new beginning for the people of God. But as we know, uh, many of us know the story, what happened, you know, it didn't turn out that way. And um, so what we found was that their impatience led to idolatry there with the golden calf. And when the spies came back from surveying the land, 10 of them brought an evil report and really corrupted the ears and hearts of the Israelites and they led them astray. And so that caused that whole generation to settle in unbelief and that generation never entered into the promised land. But again, these dates were supposed to be blessings, you know? But 1 Corinthians 10, 11 encourages us that the things that are written in the Old Testament were written there for our example so that, so that we don't have to fall into the same traps, guys, that they did. We can learn from them. So as we like enter into this three-week period, um, called Between the Straits. We don't have to enter into this time in fear. No, we can actually rejoice and worship the Lord instead of, you know, creating a golden calf. And we can keep our eyes on Jesus and follow him instead of, you know, trying to find ourselves a new leader or um, stop looking back in the rearview mirror at our Egypt, right? And so this is where the revelation from Ezekiel chapter 1 is so timely. And so there's a lot to look at. Um, so I encourage you guys to look and look again at that passage in Ezekiel chapter 1. But there's a few things that I noticed that I wanted to share with you. And the first thing is that the vision that um, Ezekiel received happened, like I said, in this um, fourth month of Tammuz in biblical history. And we see that there was cloud and fire, and it was basically the presence of God, right? And so in the midst of all that, it says that there were four living creatures, and they had four faces, they had four wings, they had four hands, and their wings were touching in unity. And not only were these creatures, you know, connected in unity, but the word says that when they moved, they all moved straight forward. Wherever the spirit was about to go, they would go. And they turned not when they went. Another translation says that they their faces did not turn as they went. And so to me, this jumped out just very clearly that this was God's direction to us, that we are to go where he goes, that we are to turn not, but to keep our eyes straight on him. And we will go straight through the straits together with him. He wants us to set our faces like flint, guys. As we look on into Ezekiel, yet another heavenly sight. It says that there is a wheel within a wheel. And I was thinking about that and even like sketching it out. And I thought, well, a wheel within a wheel, that's like a big eye, right? And so as you read on, you'll discover that there were four of these 
um, big wheels or big eyes. And it says that their rims actually were covered in more eyes. So there's like all these eyes all over the place and the wheels themselves moved in four different directions. And as the wheels moved, they also turned not as they went. They kept their eyes straight. And then I noticed this, that these big wheels were beside each of the living creatures. And it goes on to say that when the living creatures moved, the wheels moved with them. And when the living creatures were lifted up, the wheels were lifted up with them. And when the spirit stood, they stood. And so wherever the spirit would go, they would go in that direction. And it goes on to say, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. And I love that. You know, I read that and you know, it's hard to even grasp all of that, but I like it. I like the sound of that. And you know, earlier in the chapter, it says that the living creatures did indeed have feet, but the spirit was in the wheels. And I thought, well, wow, that's us as believers. We have these physical bodies, we have these feet, and we have these legs, and we go to and fro, you know, from here and there. But guys, we are more than just these human bodies. We are supernatural as believers. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, right? Doesn't it say that in the New Testament? The Spirit of God is not just beside us like these wheels were here in Ezekiel, but the Holy Spirit is in us. He is in our very wheels. So we can get excited about that. I like that. <laughs> and that is awesome. So I feel like the Lord is saying like we are equipped. We are equipped with the very Spirit of God. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in us now. So that Spirit of God in us is not just to raise us when we die, but to give us the ability to reign in life now. And so, you know, guys, we are not called to sit around and be stagnant. What did Jesus say? He said, follow me, right? So we're to move with him. We are to follow his cues. Even Psalm 32, 8 says that he guides us by his eye. Now, as we look at the end of chapter 1 in Ezekiel, there's one final vision there, and it is the vision of the throne of God seen with the rainbow all around his throne. And again, it's another one of these visions where you're just like, whoa, you know? And um, then I thought, well, wait a minute. And the reality hit me is that we are seated there with him, seated in heavenly places, as it talks about in Ephesians. So guys, as we move with him, we are not looking up at the heavens, you know, in despair from our situations here on earth, but rather, guys, we look at our situations from our true heavenly perspective, from our heavenly seat. And from there, guys, we look down at our situations from above. And again, that gives us the ability to reign in life. If we believe this is truly who we are, truly who we are in the spirit. So guys, let's be encouraged and let's ask the Lord to get this in our hearts, this identity. This is who we really are. And Ephesians 1 talks about this beautifully. Um, that we ask the Lord to enlighten the eyes of our heart to this reality so that we can begin to understand, as the Amplified Version says, the unlimited and exceeding greatness of his active power, his active spiritual power in us. And it's the same resurrection power in us who believe that raised Jesus from the dead and then seated him in heavenly places. And so we're right there seated with him. And so as he is, so we are in this world. So we can rest in our heavenly 
positions seated with him and at the same time we can move with him here on earth as he guides us with his eye so guys the more we focus on this reality we discover that truly we are more than conquerors in him through christ who loved us and if god is for us who can be against us nothing can stop us. So I pray this as an encouragement to you and I want to leave you with one last scripture from Proverbs that we can all meditate upon in this season. It's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 that says, trust and believe in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him, look to him, and he will make your path smooth and straight. I love that. So blessings, guys, as you go forth with him into this new season, in his rest and in his power. Blessings.